So my earlier example on how to calculate real versus nominal GDP was all pre-built. And I thought that perhaps things might be a little bit more clear for everyone if I built an example from scratch. So I'm going to go ahead and set things up here slowly. And I'm going to have apples and bananas. And we're going to have the price of apples and the quantity of apples and the total spending on apples over here and the price of bananas and the quantity of bananas and the total spending of, on bananas over here. And heck if I know what apples cost per pound in 2009, but let's go ahead and say they cost $3 per pound, then $4 per pound, then $5 per pound. And quantity transacted grows from 100 to 150 to 200. Well, then total spending on apples in any given year is the quantity times the price. And then we're going to take that formula and do a control C, copy down, copy down. Okay, great. So that's what's going on in the apple sector of the economy. Then with the bananas, let's go ahead and say that they're initially $2, then $3, then $4, and quantity grows from 200 to 300 to 400. And spending, I'm going to be super lazy here. Copy that formula over there. So again, in each case, spending in that sector of the economy, you can see, is going to be the price from that year times the quantity from that year. Okay. And then for nominal GDP, we're going to go ahead and we add up in the, the spending in the different sectors of the economy. So we go ahead and take the spending on bananas and add the spending on apples. And there, there's our nominal GDP. And then we translate that into our later years. So this is all for calculation of nominal GDP. Now let's go ahead and think about calculating real GDP. And again, with real GDP, we first identify our base here. And to keep things relatively simple and consistent, I'm going to go ahead and call this 2009 is our base year. So we're going to value things at the price in 2009, no matter which year we're talking at. So value. I'm reluctant to put price here as the label for this column because we're not saying that the price of apples in 2010 was $3 because the price of apples in 2010 was $4. What we're saying is how are we going to value the apple production that occurs in 2009, 2010, and so on. So on. The quantity we just keep as whatever it actually was. Oops. Control C. Okay, great. That fills in there. And we're going to go ahead and talk about the value of the transactions. And again, I'm reluctant to call this total spending because total spending would be the actual dollar amount here times the quantity. This is essentially how do we value the total, ac the total apple production in these given years. And we multiply the quantity times the value we put on them. And then we copy that formula down there. And everything we just did for apples, we're now going to also go do for bananas. Okay. But of course, Excel being relatively smart is going to go ahead and be able to transfer the references so that it it knows to refer back to here, and it knows to refer up to there, and so on and so forth here. And then our real GDP is going to be the value of the banana transactions plus the value of the apple transactions. And then we copy this down here, and there we go. 
of course, again, in the base here, nominal GDP and real GDP are always the same. But in the later years, we're valuing the production at the prices from our base year of 2009. So we don't have this sort of false inflation of the output level because prices have just risen. So we can go ahead and see here that this is our real GDP. And just to make it explicit here, real GDP with 2009 as base year. Now we can go ahead and calculate GDP deflator. Go ahead and put that over here. Deflator. And let me copy my years again. So real uh, GDP deflator in any given year is equal to the nominal GDP in that year over the real GDP and we multiply that by 100. So in the base year, it's always going to go ahead and be 100 because you're dividing something by itself and then multiplying by 100. And then in the later years, if prices have risen, if there's been inflation, it's going to be something greater than 100. So with our GDP deflator numbers, we can calculate the inflation rate. And the inflation rate is going to be the percentage change in the price level. And I did a kind of lazy shortcut in the other version of this, but I'm going to go ahead and do it with full detail here. So new value minus old value divided by old value. And then I'm going to multiply that whole thing by 100. So if I multiply by 100, that I don't click this percentage thing. If I don't multiply by 100, it'll end up as a decimal, and I can just tell Excel, oh, okay, that's actually a percentage. That's actually my preferred way of doing it, but your mileage may vary. And then I'm going to do that again, copy that formula down here, and figure out what inflation was between 2010 and 2011. So. There we go. That's how we go through one of these GDP calculations.